Hello, my name is Allie, and welcome to my channel. We are back with Color X Malice, Sasazuka's Route. Let's go. My parents taught me, and I've been cooking for myself since I moved to Shinjuku, so I've gotten pretty good at cooking. Are you an idiot? He asked this with a straight face. I am very serious. You're serious how? How would cooking help with the investigation? I glanced at Sasazuka's desk. Empty cup noodle containers and convenience store bento boxes were strewn about. I could bring you food. Actually, this diet is probably bad for you. I don't need that, and I'm not asking for it. I knew he'd say that. I knew that's how this would end. I just wanted to say something unexpected. He mocked me, as I anticipated, but perhaps because I said something unexpected, it felt like Sasazuka's rough edges had dulled. Now give me a serious answer, you dumb cat. If you have no real benefit, I'll throw you out. I got excellent scores in marksmanship. As I let that fact slip out in a panic, for some reason, Sasazuka eyed me intently. Have you ever shot anyone? No, not yet, but... <sighs> then... But I am prepared to. I asserted myself desperately in an attempt to silence any attempts at mockery. I've never used a gun in the line of duty. I'm also not entirely certain that I could, I could until I'm actually in that situation. But if that time comes, I train daily, so I won't regret anything. If my skills are poor, I might kill someone. A gun is a deadly weapon. <laughs> it's not something everyone should have. I dislike the way people in Shinjuku now, who without any training, are all armed with guns. Sasazuka remained silent. I didn't say anything further. I vaguely realized that if I gave in to the pressure here, it'd all be over. I wondered how much time had passed since we'd just sat here glaring. Or was it he? Did it say we or he? Oh, it said we. Okay, oh, whatever. Hmm. Sasazuka eventually broke the silence. Just because you're able to shoot a bit doesn't mean that you'll be of any use to me. No matter how I look at it, at best, you're a pawn for getting information from Sakuragawa. What? Just go and help Yanagi or someone else. You can even go help with that idiot Minyeo. Anyone else but me. That's all. Hold it right there. I've had enough of your that's alls. I'm not going to give up. If you won't listen today, then I'll come back. Huh? That's pretty annoying. I'll keep returning, and I'll keep asking. I just told you that would bother me. And I told you that I'm definitely not giving up. Now it was just a battle of wills. You're so persistent. It'll take more than that look to make me yield. There were some things that I cannot bend. I was literally putting my life on the line. Sasazuka looked clearly irritated, seeing all the determination flowing through my body. Or so I thought. He suddenly flashed a grin. Okay then, I'll test you. If you pass, then I'll respect your ability a bit. Huh? Do you remember when Yunagi and I were talking earlier about how the perpetrator of today's would be caught soon? Ah, uh, yes. First. Think about why that's the case. Then, based on your conclusion, find a common thread between the extra incidents as a whole. Common thread? You don't get any hints. There's no point in my working with someone who can't solve this. If you get that, go home. You're disrupting me. With that, Sasazuka turned his back on me for good, and I started to think for a bit. Dippy dabby. He probably thinks that he figured out the perfect gimmick to chase me away. But, conversely, this was my chance. Flashback. Besides, like people had said, he generally wouldn't hold a proper conversation with anyone if he doesn't acknowledge their skills. If he doesn't, then I'd just be a gopher. I don't want that. I feel like that the nameplate was supposed to be... Yanagi's, not mine, but I don't know. I understand. That's all that I needed to say, then.
As I stared at his silent back for a bit, I left the agency for the night. December 7th, 10.50 p.m. Oh, Miss Cat. As soon as I stepped outside, Okazaki appeared out of nowhere and approached me. Another consultation about your request? It's pretty late. Should I walk you home? Yes, please. What? He's the one who offered, but he seemed surprised that I immediately agreed. Would it be troublesome for you? It's not that. I just assumed you would assume it was. You tend to be reserved, Miss Cat. Please stop calling me that from now on. I'm Officer Lady Hoshino of SRCPO, but you know that, right? Okazaki flashed a slightly worried grin. Well then, from now on, I'll just call you Lady. Is that fine? Yes. Okazaki didn't agree or disagree. Despite his nonchalance, I definitely couldn't let my guard down around him. In fact, his type might be the most skilled. <laughs> What's so funny? Okazaki saw me looking serious and was cheerily preparing to ask questions. Hey, are you trying to crack the X-Day cases with them? I really have to keep my guard up. You already know the answer, don't you? <laughs> Anyways, let's head home. I started walking, feeling unsatisfied, as he just dropped the subject. Okazaki continued making small talk with his usual air, as if nothing happened. Confronting him only made me feel perplexed. Maybe it was a bad idea to say that I wanted to be walked home. But I wanted to snap back a bit. Internally, I laughed at my competitive streak. Right. Lady? Huh? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, it is. The cat and mouse conversation continued until we reached the house. Thank you so much for taking the time to walk me back. You're welcome. I had fun, so don't you worry about that at all. Smiling. We were obviously sizing each other up, and he showed off this smile. He was really formidable. All right, then, if you'll excuse me. I didn't have the energy to keep this up, so I turned my back to him. Don't push it. When you're in danger, call on me. Huh? After he says that, Okazaki smiled wryly. You kind of seem like you're the type who will go and really get herself in trouble. Does that mean... I hesitated a bit and pushed forward. Does that mean I'm also an important target? Okazaki opened his eyes a bit, as if I'd caught him off guard. No, that's just my personal intuition. He displayed his trademark soft smile. Itchy nose. Eek. I said goodbye as I watched Okazaki's back stroll off, still feeling confused by his parting comment to me. Doo -doo -doo. I'm home. Huh? Okazaki isn't home yet. I checked my cell phone, but he hadn't called. Worried and annoyed, I started typing a text. Where are you now? Come home soon. After I took off my shoes and hung my coat on the hanger, I finally received a text reply from Kazuki. Akito's house. I'm staying over. At someone else's house? So suddenly? I was relieved to know where he was, but that just made me sigh because of a different problem. I'd like to meet them at their place, so please give me their contact info. His response was quick. That's not necessary. Jeez. Kazuki isn't here, so I don't need to make dinner. I'm just going to take a shower and get to sleep. So much happened today. Meeting Sakuragawa, the latest X-Day incident, Minigishi's cryptic and disturbing words, also Sasuzuka's test. My head feels like it's going to explode. I sighed heavily as I stripped off my clothes and prepared for the shower. 
I felt startled when my fingertip touched something cold as I was undoing my buttons. I got a hiccup. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this caller had taken control of my life. Even right at that moment, it exerted control over my actions. The fact made my skin crawl. I can't say that I'm not afraid. I'd forget temporarily when I'm preoccupied. But when things slow down, I couldn't help but have thoughts of my ever-approaching death. That's why I have to give it my all. I looked away from the mirror and headed into the hot shower. December 8th, 6 a.m. Knock, knock. Oh no, chop, chop, chop. <laughs> yeah, this should be good. Since I'd woken up earlier than usual, I was diligently working on making today's bento. No matter how busy life got, I tried to make sure I cooked for myself. It calmed me down, and I'd also get good food as a result. I think about the process and the work. I visualize the combination of the ingredients and seasonings and the completed dish. The whole process is really fun for me. And at least Kazuki eats the bento box that I made for him. He never said anything in particular about it, but whenever I saw a lunchbox that came back empty, I felt a little bit relieved. That was probably especially true right now, because our relationship was a bit strained. Today's bento had Kazuki's favorite food. It was grilled pork marinated in miso. The key to the dish is grated apples. The acidity tenderizes the meat, so it soaks up marinade. That's weirdly put, but I don't know. It's actually a proper menu item back at my parents' inn. Oh, I just had a thought. Sakuragawa likes meat, right? Forensics must have worked all night because of yesterday's incident. Maybe I'll take some for her, too. I wondered if that would make her suspicious. Simply wanting her to give my delicious cooking a try was perfectly normal motivation for doing so. But maybe... I should make it just in case. If she gave it back to me, then I could just have Seiki eat it or something. After I settled upon my decision, I began to prepare enough meat for three servings. Mm. By the time Kazuki came into the living room, breakfast and the bento were already finished. You got back early in the morning, right? Did you get enough sleep? Man, who cares? Although it's common now, I sighed when Kazuki disgustedly clicked his tongue upon seeing me. Are you sure you're not causing trouble for Akito's family? We have to properly thank them later. Mm. He completely ignored me. If I pushed further, it had become an argument. When I met Akito next time, I had to be sure to thank him. Breakfast is ready. Just take a seat and wait. As the conversation reached its abrupt death, I recalled the conversation that I had with, with Sasazuka last night. I was going to say Okazuki. Whoops, wrong dude. I had slightly puzzled feeling as I served the rice and miso soup. After I got dressed and went to work, I immediately headed to forensics. But Sakuragawa was out taking a nap. She must be exhausted. After someone told me where her desk was, I left her a note in the bento I made for her and immediately went back to my desk. There was an official announcement on the news this morning which stated that yesterday's incident was related to X-Day. It spurred a lot of calls that morning. Are you alright, Moshida? Mm, well, I made sure to grab a nap. I'll manage. Bags under his eyes, he doesn't look like he slept much. I tried to ease his weariness by dealing with as many of the constantly ringing phones as was humanly possible. Yes, you have reached SRCPO. This is Hoshino speaking. Footsteps. What? After I finished up a phone conversation, I noticed that the hallway was bustling. Hey! On the video site, there's another X-Day video. Uh, 
Once I heard those words, I reflexively began typing on the keyboard. Next day. Only 23 days until rebirth. Is this... Is this a park somewhere? It showed a fire near near a public restroom. Excessive love can become a dangerous weapon. This is doubtly true for delusional love. A terrified woman is threatened on a nightly basis, yet the police ignore her plight. What does it mean? Something stuck in the corner of my mind. Although the voice was altered, the voice's cruelness comes through clearly. Adonis will let fall the hammer of judgment for all our fellow women who have endured such terror. A dark figure was visible in the roaring flames. Could that be... The reports keep on coming. We're too late. Like yesterday, they're requesting SRCPO backup. Hoshino, I want you to stand by here. Huh? But... We need people responding here, too. Understood? Mashita patted, patted my shoulder, said he was relying on me, and left immediately. Buzz, buzz. Maybe. I took out my cell phone from my chest pocket. The, slen- the slender, the sender of the text was just as I expected. Are you going to the crime scene? I replied immediately. No, I'm on standby. The response also came quickly. Okay, fine. Hmm. I wonder if he wanted me to go to the crime scene. While I stared at the extremely terse texts, the phone immediately started ringing. Yes, you have reached the SRCPO. December 8th, 1.10 p.m. After a little past noon, I was finally given a break. Because these incidents happened on consecutive days, a lot of residents were hysterical, and dealing with them burned me out. I'm s- My gosh, that stomach. I'm starving. I hope you heard that, because if not, I stopped for a really weird reason. (laughs) I usually ate my lunch at my desk, but right now I wanted to go outside. I wasn't going to make it through the day if I didn't try to change up my mood a bit. It's cold. I don't really want to eat on the roof in a coat. Oh, perfect timing. I just happened to coincidentally bump into Sakuragawa. Thank you for all your hard work. After saying that, I saw her hands holding what was unmistakably the bento box I'd made, so my shoulders tensed up for a moment. Maybe she hated it? Thanks for this. Are you going on a break right now, too? Yes. Wait, um, yes. (laughs) What's with the sketchy behavior? If you're going to eat lunch, I know a good spot, so let's go eat together. What? Um. Without understanding what's going on, I began walking to keep up as Sakuragawa grabbed my hand and led the way. Oh, Hoshino is the other guest that you were talking about. I'd been led to field support, also known as Shiraishi's base. As my eyes began to involuntarily wander, Miyukai smiled happily. I'm going to let you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!